I think we're bad about romanticizing things from our past. And even if they weren't all that great, the nostalgia makes us remember it as being awesome. Kind of having one of those moments right now. We've got a customer, pretty good sized customer that we still sell some winter squash to. But it's nothing like the, the deal we used to have at Walmart in a good way. Um, we just kind of gotten into picking pumpkins. You can see we've got a few jacks out here. We got a bunch in the field yet. Um, on the first picking, and there'll be many pickings to come. Picked a few mixed heirlooms, and we've picked a fair amount of winter squash. Nothing to write home about, but having a moment of reflection here washing squash told Holly it reminds me of the good old days we even got the dump tank running we hadn't run it in several years we've done a bunch of washing obviously we wash our squash every year we don't grow near as much as we used to we grow like three or four acres of it just enough to supply these people but these days we pack them in pumpkin bins, 36 inch bins, because it comes out to be about the size of a macro bin after they repack it, which is how they store the product until they move it. Let me turn y'all around. There we go, that's better. But well, we've washed a couple of short bins of acorn. Washing, you go ahead. We're washing, uh, Washing some butternut now. And uh, this is a dump tank I bought several years back. I think maybe I bought it about the last year that we, we were doing business with Walmart. And it works really good. It holds a little over 500 gallons of water. We put Sanidate in that water and uh, I think it really improves the shelf life. But um, the only problem that it has that I don't like, particularly like about it, is it don't self feed too good. In other words, it kind of creates a, a back current that pushes the squash away. So we kind of have to feed it, but it still works out really well. Um, then the squash go in here on these brush, brushes that are turning that way, but it's uphill. So um, they have to lay there and kind of roll for a bit. And there's like eight nozzles that are spraying water on them. And then on the front end, there's some silicone donuts that semi-dry them in a round table. And I've showed you all this stuff before, but I haven't made a video in a while, so I just wanted to throw something up. And I'll take y'all out here while I'm at it and show you our mum crop, how they're coming along. We've got, got some harvest bins of corn stalks out here. We're gearing up for fall. It is the, the 9th of September actually. Time's clicking on by. So this is our our outdoor mums, I'll call them. I know most everybody grows them outdoor, and I've had a few people comment about they thought I was kind of crazy for growing them in a greenhouse. But these are going to be uh, the last ones that we sell. Um, we we planted them at different times, and I don't know if that's real common or not. We planted them at different times they bloom based on the amount of daylight amount of hours of daylight they're getting so they don't bloom based on age but i was really wanting to try to keep them consistent size and keep them from splitting open mums are bad about when they get real real big they want to split so i was trying to avoid that by staggering when i planted them but these these babies right here are it's hard for me to give you a point of reference. 
they're pretty big these are the first ones that we're going to sell uh, these will be blooming soon you can see right here it's just about time for me to cut the, the fertilize off to them been giving them uh, like 15 5 30 mum feed and they say when when you start to see color to cut the fertilize off and give them straight water and it stresses them makes them bloom you can see these over here and here are younger than these these are covered in blooms they're just just about ready to crack open My youngest son, Eden, is a basil growing son of a gun. These came in a pollinator mix that he bought. He was expecting them to be flowers. I don't know if I've said anything about it on here or not, but Eden grows flowers and goes to the markets with his mom and sells them. Now here we've got our cabbage and broccoli and collards and whatnot coming along. So if you're looking for some fall plants we got you covered they're a little bit small yet but it won't be long i need to give them a shot of fertilize and about another week and they'll be ready to rock here a while back we got us a new sign made and i'll turn y'all around to you. ain't it pretty made us a little flower bed got our voluntary ag district sign up might take me a few years, but I'm going to get this place looking decent. I know I've been a little slack on putting out the videos lately, but we have just been so dang covered up busy. Uh, we've dug a new well. I think that may have been happening in one of my last videos. Right here, some of, wherever. Here's some of Eden's zinnias that he sells. He's really done well with that. I'm proud of him. I wanted to bring y'all over here. One last thing on the end of this video here. So, this is uh, been a long time coming. This is uh, the greenhouse. If I can get backed up enough, golly, things zoomed in. This is the greenhouse that we started on. Well, we finished building framework about this time last year and here recently we just got our water line trenched in and we're actually fixing to build a new greenhouse we're gonna put it right here just bought it uh, it's a used greenhouse but it's complete it's in good shape and me and the guys are gonna go take it down here pretty quick because we ain't got a lot of time before they go home for the year I just wanted to bring y'all over here and show y'all I'm kind of proud of this we've got four rows of determinate tomatoes right now where we're at um, we just I, I would prefer to grow big beef and this coming spring I will probably grow big beef on this other side over here in this particular high tunnel uh, but this at this point in the season we just ain't got time to look after an indeterminate greenhouse tomato so we uh we went with some uh red morning which is a really good variety we grow a lot of red morning tomatoes in the field we grew put planted those in here i'm not sure can't the count on them these are our normal pickle tomatoes or a uh, pickle yeah pickle tomatoes pickle cucumbers here um i'm not 100 percent sure Maybe a maxi pick. It's what I normally try to get, but I can't always find them. And squash. We got some squash blooming. And of course, we got a couple thousand broccoli and cabbage and whatnot in here. Just to have a place to put it. Not that it really needs to be in the greenhouse. And it looks like I'm actually, yep, son of a gun. I'm out of fertilizer. 
got a canalizer in here that is uh, feeding all this stuff making it look all big and pretty uh, the way that that kind of works the way i've got this set up it's actually just kicked on i believe i got one of these little amazon timers i don't remember how much it cost when i bought it wasn't much i know the brand of it it's like that but it works phenomenal it's got a little nine volt battery in it that seems to never die and the way you want to do it, even if you're running out of a well like we are here, is you want to run into your chemilizer, pick up your, your fertilize, and then go through your filter. And the last thing is go with your, that should be a 12 PSI, I'm not sure. That's what it's supposed to be. Go through your uh, pressure regulator and then to your drip tape. Uh, I'm bad about not always using pressure regulators depending on the situation but this type of situation right here you definitely want to run a pressure regulator or you're gonna blow all your lines we've got 60 pounds coming from the well 10 gallons a minute really pleased with the way the well turned out we got good water pressure and this little little jagger drip tape right here even running through that chemilizer and filter, which cuts your pressure back a little bit, it would still blow things all to pieces if we didn't regulate it. But anyway, um, I know I've been kind of slack on the videos, but I'm going to get back on them. I'm kind of back in the mood now. We've starting to slow down a little bit. we still got a lot going on. We've got a lot of pumpkins to pick. We've got a greenhouse to build, and we're fixing to build a, a 40 by 100 we're gonna kind of call it the warehouse it's gonna be a it's actually gonna be a warehouse equipment shed and farm shop because right now warehouse and farm shop has to take place in our packing shed which is not an ideal place to work on things and it's not an ideal place to store things when you're trying to pack produce so we're gonna fix us a place and I'm going to try to film as much of this whole process as I can. I'm going to try to make a video here pretty soon about laying some strawberry plastic if it'll ever stop raining. We uh, didn't get any rain much when we were in such desperate need of it back when we was trying to get our pumpkins going. And now that our, we're picking pumpkins, it won't stop raining, which if you know anything about much about growing pumpkins, that's not what you want. But... Uh, it's going to work out. Looks like we're going to have a pretty decent crop of pumpkins. I'm going to try to make some, some pumpkin picking videos. And uh, I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see you next time.